Today, I'm reviewing the Hasselblad 503CX. What is up guys? I'm Jason Olsred and this is the Pixels and Grain Photo Show. And today I'm reviewing the Hasselblad 503CX, an old medium format film camera. All right, so if you're looking to get into film photography and you're looking for a medium format film camera, by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you all the pros and cons of the Hasselblad 503CX so you know whether it's right for you. Now for this Hasselblad review, I'm gonna be covering five main points that may or may not you know, sway your decision to want to buy into an older Hasselblad system into an older film system. So for this review, I'm gonna be covering the interchangeable film back, the viewfinder, the lens of course, and then also the format of the camera, what format of film it takes and what format of uh, image that it gives you. And then also most importantly, and probably the thing you wanna know the most about is the cost of getting into an old Hasselblad system like this. Starting with the film back, Hasselblad was really known for their interchangeable film backs, which really gave the photographer a lot of freedom when it came to shooting different types of film and different film speeds. So you can simply just press the button and the film back completely comes off, allowing you, if you have other film backs, to add on or to photograph in different film styles and different film speeds. So you weren't stuck for the full 12 frames on one you know, color film or black and white film, or you weren't stuck on 12 frames with one ISO if you're going from light to a dark situation. And that really, really is a benefit to photographing or shooting these old Hasselblad systems. Now for the viewfinder, which is actually a waist level viewfinder, you just flip it up here and you look down through the mirror at whatever you're photographing, which means that everything is turned backwards. Now, I really, really love this waist level viewfinder. It does come in problematic at times when you wanna get up high, which means you'd have to have a ladder to do it. But for the most part, it really brings back the nostalgia of shooting film, and I love that. It has a little flip up here that you look down through to actually do your focus. And if you're so inclined, you can actually add in different screens. So you just pull this off and then flip these little levers here and drop that screen out. And then you can put in a new screen, which I have right here. It's a split view screen, which makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion, when you're photographing people and at like 2.8 or you know something really sh shallow depth of field you really need to nail that focus and the split you know split image uh, viewfinder really allows you to nail that focus down uh, when you're trying to to get that you know shallow depth of field so highly recommend getting different screens there for your possible one all right so moving on to the uh, lens, the Hasselblad actually uses the best lenses, the best glass in the entire photographic industry, and those are Zeiss lenses. Now, two features that I'm going to talk about on this lens specifically, which is the 82.8. Now, the 80 uh, gives you the same perspective basically as a 50 millimeter and a 35 millimeter camera. So it is the most true to what our eyes see. So the T-Star simply means that it has a coating on it, and that coating protects it. It also uh, gives you a more contrasty image, which is, I think, a, a really good thing. You know, a lot of images, especially in the digital world, come out under contrasty, a little flat. 
but I love the contrastiness of this lens. It also uh, claims to be flare resistant. And from my experience, having shot into the sun, it is pretty darn good. There are not a lot of flares. Now, if you like flares, then you may not want to go with the T-Star. You might want to go with the older school lens. It doesn't have that coating on it. The other feature with this lens that is absolutely awesome is that it's a leaf shutter, which simply means that you can photograph using flashes above the 125 or 250th that a DSLR uh, uses or has to have. So I can photograph at 500th of a second with a flash with this camera and nail it, no problems at all, which by the way, 500th of a second is really all this goes up to, <laughs> which can be a big problem when you're shooting a 400 speed film out on a sunny day. But I will create a video on how I get around that and still shoot at 2.8. All right, question for you. What is the number one feature that you're looking for in a medium format film camera? Leave it in the comments below. I'd love to know your answer. Now, let's move on to the format. All right, so the Hasselblad is a six by six medium format camera, which means that the image that is produced by a Hasselblad is six by six square format. Now the six by six uh, film is three and a half times larger than it is with a 35 millimeter camera, which simply means that your image is gonna be a much higher quality at the same print size as a 35 millimeter camera, such as if you go up to a four by five camera or an eight by 10 camera, the image quality gets better and better because the uh, originating image on that film, that piece of film is larger and larger. It's like going from a, small megapixel camera to a large megapixel camera. So a camera that shoots 20 megapixels is not going to have as good a film quality as a camera shooting 40 megapixels or 100 megapixels. Same thing goes with the Hasselblad and its 6x6 six six format film. Now the Hasselblad is considered the Rolls-Royce of cameras within the photography world. And that's not to negate other film systems. I know there's a lot of other great film systems out there, probably just as good as the Hasselblad, but Hasselblad is considered an industry leader and has been for many, many, many years, which means that it comes with a higher price tag than most other camera systems. Now, at the time of this airing, I spent $2,750 on my 503CX. Whatever you do, don't tell my wife. <laughs> it's an expensive system, but it is one of the best. All right, so while the Hasselblad 503CX is an amazing system. I like this side better. <laughs> I like the windy thing. Like every camera out there, it's not perfect. So I want to share some of the pros and cons that might help you in deciding whether this system is right for you. Now let's start with the pro, which is that it's super durable. Uh, this camera made out of all metal, it is probably about the most durable camera that you'll find of any camera out there to date. A con would be that it's all manual. So if you're a newbie to photography or if you're a newbie since digital photography and you don't fully understand how to use your camera on manual, this camera will be a little bit challenging for you because there's no metering through the viewfinder. It is all manual. Now, another pro is that it has an interchangeable back. This interchangeable back is just like with your digital camera and you can change the settings on that. Think of a, uh, changing out this back as a camera setting. So I can take this back off that has a 100 speed ISO film in it and I can put on a new 400 speed ISO back or I can switch from black and white to color just like you can easily do 
on your digital camera. Now, another con would be that it's delayed gratification. So in the digital world, we're used to taking a shot and then instantly being able to see it on the back of your camera. In the film world, it's not like that. In the film world, you've got to develop your film, print it, or send it off to be developed and scanned before you actually see it could take a bit of time. It takes me about a week and a half to two weeks to send in the film, get it processed, scanned, and back. Now, another pro would be that it's extremely tactile. So uh, using an old film camera like this brings you back to the roots of photography and the sounds that it makes and the noises that it makes and the feel that it has in your in your hand uh, is very, very tactile camera. Now, another con is that it has expensive accessories. So from the film back to the viewfinder to the lens, all these accessories are no longer in production, which means that they're more expensive to find today than they used to be. And lastly, a pro is that it has amazing image quality with that Carl Zeiss lens. It's a medium format. It gives you such, such beautiful images, which in my opinion, I think are better than digital photos. And lastly, a con is that it is an expensive system. So to get into a 503CX Hasselblad is going to run you quite a bit of money. And that might be money that you could spend better on a digital camera that you could make money with or on a system that's not quite so expensive if you're just exploring uh, film photography. But if you want the best, you got to pay for the best. All right. So there you have it. The Hasselblad 503CX medium format film camera. Now, if you're serious about film photography, I honestly don't think there's a better system than the Hasselblad 503CX or the Hasselblad, any Hasselblad old school film camera system. I think they're just amazing cameras that produce amazing images. However, it's not necessary. If you're just starting out in photography, or if you're just now exploring film photography or wanting to get back into film photography like myself, I don't know that you need to get such an expensive system. There are some amazing cameras out there that cost way less that produce really, really good images that you can get into and explore this world of film photography. And if you ever want to, you can always bump up to a Hasselblad system at any time. All right. So Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and reviewing the Hasselblad 503CX. And I will see you next time on the Pixels and Grain Photoshop. Go ahead, subscribe, and watch the other video.